here we are, dear brothers and sisters. There's so much going on in the world. There's so much that many of you have already seen on the news. And all I can say in the beginning of all of this is my heart is absolutely breaking for everything that is happening to both Palestinians and Jewish people, uh, both in the Middle East and everywhere, as we will soon see. Today, I'm going to look at some clips here with you. We're going to open up some recent news clips of what's been going on, not necessarily only in the Middle East, which, you know, we've done that and you have seen a lot of that. But we're going to dig up some of what's happening really all over the West, even right now. And, and the reason that I'm bringing up the West is because this is what many of us could have not imagined to occur at the time it is occurring. So before we go any further, I'm going to play you some clips. We're going to talk about them and everything that's going on in the world right now. Here we go for the first one. This is going to be a protest that is occurring and they're interviewing some of the protesters, uh, Palestinian protesters. Here we go. Do you condemn Hamas or do you support their efforts? Do you condemn 75 years of occupation? That's the answer. I am not uh, going to condemn Hamas. Should Israel exist? There is no Israel. The U.S. points to Hamas in Gaza and say they're terrorists. Do you agree? That's unacceptable. All right. So the, of course, I'm going to just point out before you go further that what we're seeing right now is that the, um, the the people who are speaking here, they do not represent everyone who is um, concerned with the Palestinian people, of course, but they are people on the ground and there are many of them like these on the ground waving Palestinian flags and saying we support Hamas. They refuse to condemn Hamas. They refuse to condemn the violence that was that occurred when they entered Israel and did the unspeakable murderous acts. And let me just say to this that look. Today, we can see demonic things before our eyes on every news channel in ways that we could not have imagined months ago. And if you are unable to identify it as a demonic as it is, then I ask what spirit is in you. So please recognize what you will stand against and what you will stand for. We must begin at least with saying that we will stand against the murdering of babies, of innocent people. And by the way, on any side of this equation, many people are looking at this conflict and they are thinking that it is as simple as that the Palestinian cause is the one to vote for or the Israeli cause is the one to vote for. But the reality is, is things are way more complicated than only that, because we all can understand that behind all of everything that's happening or at the end of the day, secular governments and secular people. And because the Prince of Peace, Yeshua, the Messiah, he is the only one who is the Prince of Peace. He is the only one, therefore, who is the Prince that can bring peace and any other leaders. Some leaders in this world are better than others, but they're all human beings and they are unable to bring about peace because we're all fallen and we're all sinners and we're all in need of the peacemaker of peacemakers, the one who could save our soul. But what we can make a distinction of, like many of these people are perhaps some of them are out there and they're protesting and saying there are innocent people, civilians caught on the crossfire of the war. And I will say yes. And I pray for them. I pray for all of them to be protected, to encounter the Messiah, to see his face, because I recognize that I myself having been redeemed by the Messiah, I recognize how everyone needs that redemption. But I also have to say, well, look, there are people who you can say, I, I, I stand for the Palestinian people. Fine. But then condemn what Hamas has done, condemn the killing of the innocent Israelis. And so on the other side is the same thing, right? So we have to be careful, brothers and sisters, so that we could stand for what is true and don't get caught up and pulled into a discussion that's not fruitful anymore. Let's look at the next 
clip here and before you go on. Valuable Taras scrolls and prayer books reduced to ashes after an arson attack on this ceremonial hall on the Jewish part of Vienna's main cemetery. The last time this very hall was set on fire was almost to the day 85 years ago by the Nazis on Kristallnacht, Chief Rabbi Yaron Engelmeyer tells me. From plastering stars of David on Jewish homes in Paris to a Molotov cocktail attack on one of the main synagogues in Berlin, so we have this situation where there is a cemetery that's being burned up with, Jew with uh, Jewish uh, writings, Hebrew writings, and so on. And the last time that that was set alight was when the Nazis did it. And this is happening in the West now, in Austria. So what we are seeing is the... You see, this has always been below the surface. Since World War II ended the hatred and the anti-Semitism didn't. It became unpopular because, of course, those who were anti-Semitic and who hated Jewish, Jewish people out in the open, they were silenced by the Allies. The war went, the world went to war over the situation. So it wasn't that popular. But today, what was it, 80-something years later now? It is no longer taboo. It has become popular again as you will soon see we have we're seeing people marching through the streets saying the killing of innocent jewish people caught in the middle of all of this is justified somehow we have people burning down cemeteries of jewish people and that is justified somehow and now look at what is being issued by the Israeli national guard council the security council is urging all israelis to consider whether any foreign travel anywhere in the world is necessary at this dangerous moment. We are also asking citizens, and truly I cannot believe that we are doing this, we are asking all citizens to avoid displaying any outward signs of their Israeli or Jewish identity when traveling anywhere in the world. All right, so in the world, in the West, everywhere, as a Palestinian, right, you don't have to fear you can travel, but as a Israeli or as a Jewish person, if you look Jewish, there is now fear for having that appearance because the persecution is tangible and real all over the world. Now, brothers and sisters, this, we have to come to terms with what this is and where this comes from. See, what Hamas did to innocent people, including innocent babies, is caused by a spirit. And that same spirit was what we saw on the streets among those protesters who refused to condemn what Hamas has done. That same spirit is behind the burning of Jewish cemeteries and just last, uh, last night, the killing of an elderly Jewish man on the streets simply because he was Jewish. That same spirit is an antichrist spirit. And you're like, well, Petey, what do you mean? Because, Petey, don't you know that, that many Jewish people do not even accept Christ? How can it be an antichrist spirit? See, what you don't understand, dear brothers and sisters, is that there is a, a spirit of persecution that is after the seed of Abraham. And you're like, well, Petey, the, the seed of Abraham, they don't believe. See, God has proclaimed that there will come a day when they will look upon the one they have pierced. And yes, there are Jewish people who are evil in their hearts, have evil motives. <laughs> there are evil people in every people group. But that does not mean that God has forsaken them. He has said the callings that I have for the, for the tribes of Israel are irrevocable. And Judah is one of those tribes that retained their identity. And, the, and through that line came the Messiah. And so Satan hates that line because they were the chosen people that God chose to preserve to, and to use to preserve His Word, to preserve the, the ability for really us to have come in through the Messiah because that, needed, that, that way for the Messiah needed to be prepared for Him to come into the world because ultimately He couldn't have just been born into some random culture. 
He, he had to be born into a culture that had an understanding of the God of Israel, had a preservation of the Torah, had it set up, and they weren't perfect. That's why they even rejected him. That's why Yeshua said, you know, you, he even called many of them, right? Children of the devil, those leaders who came against him, but he was not speaking about every Jewish person in Israel. Instead, he died for their sins and he purified them. He for all who would come to him would have a chance to be um, to have be forgiven. But he also says, Paul writes in the book of Romans for us, and he says that a time is coming right now. They're blinded so that you and me can come in, so that Gentiles can come into the faith by the mercies that have been afforded to us. And by the mercy that's been afforded to us, he then says the Jewish people that have been blinded will come in. So to just go and say, well, they are not on the same team. They are Antichrist. Be careful because God says there is a remnant in our future that is going to come in back, that is going to have their eyes open, their hearts softened, and they're going to see the Messiah. And it's not for me or for you to be the judge. It's not for me or for you to be the the judge of someone's or some people's salvation. The prophecies are clear that there remains a remnant. And there are, there are, I, I have to keep saying this because people keep, keep, keep misunderstanding. There, there is a remnant. And yes, there is people who are Jewish, who are evil. People keep bringing up, what about the Rothschilds? And what about the, the Zionists? And what about, why do we generalize? Why do we, why do we paint everyone with the same picture? That's exactly what Hitler did. Don't you know? Hitler did that. And we are using the same reasonings. Hitler said, look at the elite Jewish people. They're controlling all the banks. Look at the elite Jewish people. They're controlling our economy. They're the ones who stole everything from us. They did this. They did that to us. They oppress us. They are putting some of our people in slavery. It's the same old lies from 80 years ago. We're hearing all over again. And yes, some people in the elites, of course, they are guilty of some of those things. But we're painting a whole nation. What? What are we doing? And now the West is just e- many in the West, not all, many in the West are just eating this up. Many of our children, even America, I saw a clip of children in schools chanting again for Hamas, chanting and a Hamas war cry. And so ultimately, brothers and sisters, I want to submit to you that we're at this place where what has been private before has now become public and and the Jewish people have always been the canary in a coal mine. It's always been that when they become persecuted, look at what happened in World War Two. They were the first ones who became persecuted because they're easy to persecute. They are a minority. It's easier to persecute minorities because the majority isn't the minority. The majority may just go ahead along with it. Number two, they are the top in many of the top uh, in society compared to how many Jewish people there are. So they're a very uh, high standing people in society because, well, for one reason, they are blessed because God has blessed the people that keep commandments. Not all do, but many do. And they are blessed for it. And they are the chosen people. And that's why they are blessed for it. And so they become a prime target. And then lastly, they are the people that has retained the Israeli tribal identity. Because remember, the other tribes were scattered. Many of them assimilated into the nations, lost their identity. They don't know who they are anymore. But Judah did retain their identity. Jewish people, for the most part, know they're Jewish. And the world knows they're Jewish. And Satan knows they're Jewish. So they became prime targets because they are of that line of David. And now the question is, I guess, when we're facing similar things, as we just saw some of those clips, then what we saw happened at the precursor of the Holocaust. I'm not saying there is a Holocaust that's happening in a few years, but I'm just saying to you that what we're seeing is what we did see. We saw that 98% of Nazi Germany were Christians which was an abominable statistic for me to even have to say on here. And yet they, under their watch, they allowed what happened to happen. They listened to the world 
more than reading their Bible. Look, brothers and sisters, now is the time for you to get in the Bible. There are so many people who are commenting, who are saying things. And look, I have no problem with questions. I have no problem with, with what about this, what about that? But when we start making statements that are anti-Semitic and full of hatred, and, we, and because we have not read our, and we say the Bible says this, the Bible says that when it has said no such thing. Many of us are repeating what we have heard. Don't even look, go to the Bible, go to Zechariah. It's all there. Go to the book of Romans. It's all there. Go and read the scriptures regarding the prophecies and see how God has not lost sight that he has not replaced his people. And so now I want to submit to you that we're looking back and many of us can hopefully agree that Nazi Germany was an evil government because, well, the allies won. But that's why we could say it. The fact that that America went to war about this is one reason perhaps why America, at least to some extent, has this perspective. But many Americans stood with Nazi Germany at the time of Nazi Germany. And many people do not know this. This is not often taught in history. And so similarly today, I'm saying to you that if you are indifferent, if you do not decide where you will stand, then what's going to happen? And, and let me say this, where you will stand regarding the calling of Israel, regarding what God's plan is for the future of Israel, then it is easy to believe the words, the, the world's justification joining in with their hatred. And that's what's happening with many believers today. They are simply jumping on the bandwagon because they are unsure about what God has spoken regarding Israel's future calling. And so I want to submit to you that that spirit of Hamas, that spirit that's on many of our streets right now in the West, that same spirit is going to come for all of us one day. And I'm not fear mongering because the Bible says this. The Bible says that one day that there is going to come persecution, that Satan is going to make war with those who hold to the testimony of Yeshua and who keep the commandments of God. That same spirit that is now comfortable going after minorities will come after those who are not simply minorities but those who are believers, which become like in Nazi Germany, that's not a small portion anymore. The true believers, those who stood up in Germany against the Nazi regime, many of them were put in gas chambers too. Many of them were killed and executed because they were forced by their faith. Their faith in Christ compelled them to stand up for their Jewish brethren because they recognized that what was being done, the hatred, the anti-Semitism, the murderous acts of the Nazis, they understood that it was anti-Christ, satanic, demonic. And for that reason, they stood up. Some of them took Jewish people in and protected them from the Nazis and hid them in their homes. And many of those who, who helped save the uh, uh, Jewish people lost their lives in the process. And so my question to you is, is, is where will you stand on this matter? Because we are in a place right now where many of our children are being indoctrinated with hatred. And again, let me say this, that I pray every day. I'm praying me and my wife. We sit and we pray for the Palestinian civilians and innocent people caught in the crossfire. We pray for the Israeli people caught in the crossfire. We pray for all of their eyes to be open. So this is not a one sided thing. But in this video, we are talking about what's happening on the streets of the world right now. And that is something that we have to face now because it will increase as it increased in Nazi Germany, because Christians like you and me turned a blind eye. And there's a story I want to tell you about this story where the trains that transported the Jewish people were riding by and there were churches where in which they sang a little louder 
when the trains came by. They sang a little louder. They did not stand up in the ways they should have. Man, if it should mean that you lose your life in the midst of it, then let you lose your life in the midst of it. I would rather stand before my Yeshua, my God one day, saying that I stood up and I didn't keep quiet. I didn't let myself be silenced by the world, by the hatred, by the Antichrist spirit, by the demonic satanic spirit, that spirit that it put, that was in the hearts of those murderers. murderers. I'm not going to let that silence me. And that's why I'm on here tonight. What are you going to do in your community? I want you to think about that. Where are you going to say, man, what are you going to say on Facebook? At least start there. What are you going to say in your community? What, what are you going to do? And when this increases, when the persecution increases, when the pressures increase and the mark of the beast one day arrives, I'm not saying it arrives tomorrow. I'm not saying it arrives next week, but I'm saying when it arrives, will you be ready to take a stand? Because many people, I want to say to you this, the reason that many people joined with Nazi Germany who are Christians is because they weren't Christians. Not that, that, that statistic of whatever it was, however many people said they were Christians, there were few who were truly Christians because those who were truly believers would not stay silent in a situation like that. They will go and they will die. What a greater love is there for one to lay down his life for another. You say, Peter, you're crazy. I say that I know the Bible. Go and read the Bible. Go and study the scriptures. And so, you know what, Peter, why are you so, why are you so like passionate about this? Like, why is this like so? Because people are going to die and people are dying. Palestinians are dying. Jewish people are dying. And people are dying even on the streets of the West. And that should scare you. Even if you're not Jewish, it should scare you. And so for the risk of sounding redundant to all of you, I believe I, I, we should pray right now. I would like to pray for everyone involved. But I would like to also pray for you. I would like to pray for me. I would like to pray for us to gain understanding as to what this means for us in a time like this, for us to not feel like we are in this comfortable place. We go to work, we come home. Our life isn't impacted by any of this. We feel what's happening over there, or maybe what's happening on our streets. It's there. It's to another people group. It's not to us. You're next if you don't do anything about this. And so it is important for us to think about that. Father, I pray right now, Lord, for everyone who's listening to this. Lord, I pray for divine understanding. Anyone who's listening to this, who's unsure about this. Pray that you would just come with your Holy Spirit, Lord, and that you would speak to their hearts, Lord. I know that there is so much confusion that the enemy is sowing among everyone, believers and non-believers. And, and Father, I ask that you would by your spirit for all who are earnestly seeking the truth about the matter, seeking to understand what you have to say in your word. Holy Spirit, I ask now as I speak that you would come and illuminate to the hearts and minds of men supernatural knowledge and revelation about what you say regarding the land of Israel, the people of Israel, the native born and those who are grafted in and the times that we are living in. Father, I ask that you would put a boldness on your people to stand up against the hatreds, to stand up. And, and Father, I pray, Lord, that we would overcome hatred of love. I pray, Lord, that we would, that our voice would be a voice of boldness. But Father, because we don't respond with violence towards the violence that's done against us, Lord, I, I pray that that even our enemies, we pray for our enemies. Lord, I pray for every person who's part of Hamas, who in their heart justifies themselves. I pray for every Palestinian who is supporting Hamas and who tries to justify themselves. Father, I pray, Lord, for there to be peace. But Father, I pray for the protection of all innocent lives. I pray, Lord, that, that the eyes of the Jewish people would be opened. I pray, Lord, that the 
the Israeli government, Father, that your perfect will will be done in them. And I pray, Lord, that that Yeshua, that you would be seen, that they would look upon the one whom they have pierced. Father, Lord, I have pierced you. Lord, all of us who are listening have pierced you by our sins. None of us are innocent and without spot and blemish. You have made us without spot and blemish. You have delivered us. You have cleansed us. You have given us salvation. And you desire that for Gaza. You desire that for Israel. You desire that to the ends of the earth. That's why you came. Lord, you came to set the captives free of every tribe and every tongue, every skin color. And so, Father, for every person who tries to exalt themselves by their genealogy, by their skin color, let them be lowered and let those who are circumcised in their inward parts, in their hearts, let them be exalted. Father, I ask that you would give uh, our speech wisdom in the situations where we are in conversations with other people and, and our families. That, Lord, I pray that you would season our words with salt and with love and with compassion, but yet with boldness against the evils that are being done on our streets. Help us to take in, uh, uh, metaphorically speaking, to take in those who are being persecuted, to hide the persecuted in our homes from the evil ones, to stand up. And Father, I pray, Lord, for governments, for politicians, that you would even by your spirit give them supernatural insight. Lord, you, by your Holy Spirit, came to deliver people who were in concentration camps. You were the one who delivered them. You were the one who sent the allies to deliver them. You were the one, Lord who saved lives, who, who you're the you're the reason, O oh Lord, that we do not live under a Nazi regime today. Lord, you are the reason that we have a hope. You are the reason. And so, Father, I pray, Lord, that that, that hope, that power that you have to work even in those who do not know you, who do not believe in you, that power that you have to work even in enemies, Lord, just like you worked in Pharaoh and in Nebuchadnezzar, Lord, I pray that you would work in the enemies of Israel today in sovereign ways that we, that I do not understand, and I will never claim to understand how you could, but I know that you're so glorious. And even where my understanding ceases, even the things that I cannot comprehend, Lord, I know what your word says, that your promises remain and are true. And Father, I pray, Lord, that you would come and have your perfect way in all these. In the name of Yeshua, I pray this. Amen. I'm just going to open up the the comments here for a moment uh, as I end off here tonight. Thank you guys so much for joining me here tonight. Um, I see Thankful Heart is saying, uh, Father, use me. Uh, ZK is saying, Heavenly Father, let your will be done. Uh, Ingrid from Facebook is saying, have mercy, Abba, forgive us um, them for we know not what we're doing. Um, I'm just reading a few more. Perse- uh, Renee is saying persecution is coming to America, regardless of whether or not we believe and very few people are prepared for it. I believe that's true, Renee. I believe that we have time as we're speaking now, but we're seeing the warning signs on the horizon. Uh, Natalie, thank you for joining Natalie. You're, she says from Facebook, praying with you and Christina, crying out to him. Amen. Thank you. Um, uh, Alan Wynn is saying this. Silence in the face of evil is itself evil. God will not hold us guiltless. Not to speak is to speak. Not to act is to act. And that's a quote from Dietrich Bonhoeffer, a German pastor executed by the Nazis. Wow. 
Thanks for sharing that. That's actually so powerful. Why am I crying? Because this is worth crying over. It just is. And if, if you if you're unable to cry about this and you need to ask why. Um, um, Christopher is saying <clears throat> I saw a video of a Nazi rally at Madison Square Garden from 1939. Nothing new under the sun. I mean, Christopher. That's very sad. Um, just going to read a few more here. Um, okay, guys, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate you all. Um, please consider sharing this video and, um, please continue praying for everyone in Israel, everyone in court in the middle of this war. Uh, every Jewish person right now on the streets who are fearing, there are students at our universities in the West, uh, everywhere in the West, and, and they're fearing right now. Um, there's a certain student who's who who got attacked, molested. Just uh, I just heard about that a few days ago. Um, and these stories are, I pray that that doesn't continue, but this is what's happening. So let's continue praying. Many, many blessings to you. Thank you for joining me. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Shalom.